Good morning and welcome to your Ignite News for Thursday, February 7th. I'm Kyler Sanderson. And I'm Nicole Schuller. Here's what's making the news. Coming up today in your Ignite News, Canadian Mint drops the penny. Uh, the upfront costs are in the tens of millions of dollars. Mohawk's Fennel Campus gets ready for a big change and Hamilton kicks off Black History Month. Even though he has been gone for a while, definitely the message that we cannot remain silent. All this and more on Ignite News. Environment Canada has issued a storm warning for the Greater Toronto Area. Flurries are to begin Thursday morning and up to 25% of snow is expected to fall by Friday. Many parts of southern and eastern Ontario will be blanketed by 15 to 25 percent of snow. The storm is expected to have a heavy impact on the Friday morning commutes. Snowfall will be heaviest around morning rush hour. According to Environmental Canada specialists, the upcoming storm could be the worst since 2011. After spending most of the year on the sidelines, some high school athletes are finally getting to play again. Some coaches and teachers in the Hamilton area say they will resume extracurricular activities. Teachers had been refusing to take part in such activities to protest Bill 115, which they say infringes on their collective bargaining rights. But teachers at some secondary schools, including Orchard Park, Sherwood, West Mound, and Highland, say that today they will begin coaching again. This year, Mohawk College has introduced its new one card, and it's both positive and negative effects across campus. I had the chance to check out some of those effects. The One Card at Mohawk is a new way for students to make paying for things at the college easier. Hannah Hayward, who works in the One Card office, says, uh, The college came up with the One Card was more of a convenient way for students so they can have the ability to not just use it for photocopying and printing, but they can also use it around campus. Some students say it does make things more simple for what they need at the college. Our group prints off a lot of stuff, so we just scan the card and print off all our presentations, which makes it easy. Because it's more convenient and you could just put money on the card and use it for whatever you need. There are some aspects of this new payment method that students are finding expensive. I think the fact that they made $25 to replace it is a money grab. I had to pay that twice already, so I'm not happy about it. The one card system is not only affecting students, but also places of business throughout Mohawk. The system needs to be improved. It's quick for the kids, but it's still a little too many buttons for us to push. Hannah says the college is taking all feedback they receive into consideration. We're always looking for new and uh, exciting projects, especially because it's a new, new uh, kind of thing. Mohawk's Fennel Campus is making room for some new programs. Adam Steinberg joins us from the newsroom. Adam, what's happening on campus? Thanks, Nicole. The Elgin Branford campus is moving uh, the Justice and Wellness program to Hamilton. For some students, riding the shuttle bus will soon become a memory in the past. The long commute from Branford is coming to an end as many of those programs are moving to Fennel. Devin Lewis is a first year police foundation student who's had a negative experience with the shuttle bus and has made his own adjustments that cater to him. I used to take the shuttle, but I'm not too happy with the shuttle service. It was a little pricey and the hours weren't exactly as I expected. If it was a little more regulated, then that would have been okay. See, if I missed one bus right now, I'd be late for all my classes. In order to compensate for the influx of students, Fennel's gymnasium will be transformed into a classroom. The Sea Wing Bookstore will be holding classes as well. As most of the Brantford students are Hamiltonians, the move seemed like a no-brainer for the administration. Right, so we did um, sort of like town halls in Brantford, and the majority of students in the law and security and the, and the wellness programs are from Hamilton, so like what you're saying. So this ends their commute. So they're not driving, not taking the shuttle. I believe it's over 80%, might be close to 90% of students in Brantford at the Elgin campus are from here. The move from Brantford to Fennel is going to bring an excess of 1,200 students in the first year alone. This means faculty may have to make some adjustments to our timetable and common hour. So we're confident that we can take on the students. We'll just balance classes and demand on things like parking and student services. We might be seeing a staggered common hour. You know how right now Wednesday's common hour for everyone? That may change just because we can't have, you know, 10,000 students descend on the cafeteria at once. The doors are closing at the old Bookstorm Gymnasium to make way for new opportunities at Fennel. For Ignite News, I'm Adam Steinberg. 
Federal Liberal Leadership candidate Justin Trudeau is making an appearance in Hamilton on Saturday. Trudeau will be stopping at West Town Bar and Grill on Lock Street South for a meet and greet at 12.30 p.m. Trudeau hopes this visit will spur further momentum for his campaign. On February 4th, the Royal Canadian Mint stopped production of the penny. Ignite News reporter Rachel Williams explored the eco economic implications of this decision. It costs 1.6 cents to even produce a penny. The decision by the federal government to cut production of the one cent coin is expected to save taxpayers approximately $11 million per year. However, William Scarth, professor of economics at McMaster University, warns that before the savings can begin, the country needs to recover what's already been lost. Uh, the upfront costs are in the tens of millions of dollars uh, just to collect them up and do away with them. It'll take a good six years for us to kind of break even on this. Retailers are adjusting to this transition by rounding to the nearest fifth of a cent. This will only apply to cash purchases. Debit and credit transactions will still be calculated to the penny. Senior accounting clerk coordinator at Mohawk College, Joanne Roberts, says cashiers around the campus have been properly trained for this transition. Yes, we do, and we've had sessions for all the cashiers. There's a rounding up and rounding down, and it's based on the government website. If you are one of many Canadians who have been stockpiling your pennies, don't worry. They can still be used at local banks, redeemed at your local retailer, or donated to charities. It still will be legal tender, but it's inefficient to lug around something that costs more than its face value to produce. So it's a good thing that we're finally acknowledging that and getting rid of it. Reporting for Ignite News, I'm Rachel Williams. Organizers of Hamilton Soup Fest say last night's event was a major success. 5,000 people crowded the Hamilton Convention Center for the event. It's a fundraiser for Living Rock Ministries to support programs for at-risk at youth in the city. It has become one of the biggest community events in Hamilton. Those who attended the event tried out dozens of different soups, from Indian split pea to lobster poutine. February's Black History Month at Stuart Memorial Church, Hamiltonians celebrated Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Ignite News reporter Megan Facciolo has the details. People of all different races celebrated Martin Luther King through music, poetry, and stories in Hamilton's Stewart Memorial Church on Sunday. Spoken word poet Michael St. George explains the significance of communicating an important message artistically. Well, I think art is probably one of the greatest gifts we have got as human beings, um, which include music. Uh, it's a tool to communicate. And I think if we're not able to communicate with each other effectively, then there's nothing we can do. A variety of different cultures congregated to celebrate through different musical acts, including African drumming, Aboriginal storytellers, and an oud from Sedan. Hamiltonian Mary McNutt enjoyed seeing everyone come together for one common purpose. We want to enjoy our lives on this earth and we want to enjoy other people and when, when we enjoy other people we realize we all basically almost want the same thing. It's just colored differently, our creed may be written differently, our songs may have a different rhythm, but when we all come together we realize how rich we are to have each other around. So to bring more together you're not overly focusing on one event so much as realizing how much in common we have with our fellow man and how our lives could all be richer for it. Event organizer Evelyn Myrie tells us why it's important to continue Martin Luther King's legacy. Even though he has been gone for a while, definitely the message that we cannot remain silent, that we must um, move forward by raising our voice, taking actions to make uh, the world a better place, is something that's still relevant today. So it's important to remember those messages. The event is a kickoff to Black History Month. The Black History Committee will be hosting a similar celebration at Mohawk's McIntyre Theatre on February 7th. Reporting for Ignite News, I'm Megan Fatrollo. Now let's look at what's coming up in sports, weather, and entertainment. We've got scattered flurries right now, but bundle up because a winter storm warning is in effect for tonight. More on that coming up in weather. Fall Out Boy is back with hopes to save rock and roll. I've got all that and more coming up on Ignite Entertainment. Hey Mohawk, 
I'm Ken Fox with your sports. The Raps kept it close against KG and the Celts, yet their fourth quarter woes continue as they eventually fell to Boston. All this and more coming up on Ignite News. Here's a look back at today's top stories. Halton police are investigating an incident in which a pedestrian was struck and killed by a GO train in Burlington early this morning. Some high school athletes are finally getting back to play again. And Soup Fest was a major success as over 5,000 people crowded Hamilton's Convention Center last night for the event. If you haven't been out yet, it's still freezing, but it might be warming up coming into next week. Let's check in with Chris for your weather update. is mainly cloudy with a high of zero. In London, there are some scattered flurries with a high of minus one. In Niagara Falls, cloudy with flurries and a high of minus two. In Toronto, more scattered flurries with a high of minus four. And here in Hamilton, we're also experiencing some scattered flurries and we're at a high of minus two. Looking ahead to the next 24 hours in Hamilton, scattered flurries are gonna continue through the evening with a high of minus four. Overnight, a winter snow warning goes into effect with an expected five to 10 centimeters of snow and a high of minus five. And tomorrow morning, the snow will continue with a high of minus two. Looking at the five day forecast, tomorrow, February 8th, the winter storm warning will remain in effect, bringing more snow with a high of minus two and a low of minus nine. On Saturday, it'll be bright and sunny with a high of minus six and a low of minus 16. On Sunday, we'll see cloudy periods with a high of minus two and a low of minus 16. Monday, warmer weather will bring scattered flurries, scattered showers, with a high of seven and a low of minus one. And finally on Tuesday, it'll be cloudy with some uh, sunny breaks and a high of zero with a low of minus four. That's it for me with weather. Let's check in with Catherine to see what's happening in entertainment. Thanks, Chris. The makeup artist behind famous Star Wars characters Yoda and Chewbacca has died at age 98. Lucasfilm confirmed on Wednesday that Stuart Freeborn, that Stuart Freeborn had died leaving a legacy of unforgettable contributions. George Lucas was quoted saying that Freeborn's artistry and craftsmanship will live on forever in the characters he created. Newly off its three-year hiatus, Pop punk band Fall Out Boy took to the stage at the studio at Webster Hall in New York. The band played for a crowd of 300 to 400 diehard fans. With the reunion comes a new album. The band is set to release their fourth album titled Save Rock and Roll later in May this year. Now let's take a look at what's happening on campus. Jamie Farr, star of TV's M.A.S.H., will be returning to Hamilton to headline The Last Romance. The dramatic comedy will be playing at Theatre Aquarius from January 30th to February 4th. Soup Fest 11, featuring soups from two dozen local restaurants, is coming to the Hamilton Convention Center. The charitable competition is being served up February 6th. Also on February 6th will be the 2013 Business and Engineering Technology Career Fair, right here at the Fennel Gym. Now, back to the desk. Despite his best director snub at the Oscars, Ben Affleck seems to be doing just fine without it. Affleck has won the Film Honor Award from the Directors Guild for the CIA thriller Argo. This win makes Argo a shoe-in for the Best Picture Award at the Oscars. That's all for me, Mohawk. Let's pass it over to Ken for your sports update. Catherine, Wednesday was a bad night for Canadian teams. The Bruins scored two quickies as Coach Julien's third period line changes paid dividends on the Bruins' 2-1 win over the Habs. The new line of Sagan, Lucic, 
and uh, Krejci potted both Bruins goals to get ahead of the Canadians. Tuka Rask made 20 saves in the win as the Bruins cemented their lead in the Northeast Division, as well as the Eastern Conference. P.K. Subban scored the lone goal for the Habs. You might say the Stars got the moves like Yager. Yarmur Yager showed that even at 40, he still has it. The Stars squeaked past the Oilers in overtime 3-2, thanks to a great individual effort by the 40-year-old. Beating Oilers 25-year-old D-man Ryan Whitney and sniping just under the crossbar of goaltender Devin Dubnik. Yager's game-winning goal in overtime is his 17th career OT winner, pacing the league for number one all-time on the overtime game winners list. The Oilers already very thin at center with Nugent Hopkins, Orkoff, and Belanger out with injuries, lost Anton Lander to a first period foot injury. Andrea Bargnani's return to the hardwood was spoiled as the Boston Celtics down Toronto 99-95 last night. Blues rained down on Bargnani, the former first overall pick. Rudy Gay led the Raps with 25 points and 12 rebounds, and even without all-star Rajon Rondo in the lineup, the Celts showed their fight, erasing a 79-69 deficit as the Raptors' fourth quarter woes continued. That's it for sports. Let's pass it back to Kyler and Nicole. With Valentine's Day just around the corner, we asked Mohawk, what's the most romantic thing that's ever happened to you? The most romantic thing I ever did was I proposed to my wife at the top of a mountain when we were on a ski trip. I'm not really a fan of Valentine's Day. Uh, we don't really celebrate Valentine's Day, my husband and I. We just do nice things throughout the year for each other. So the most romantic thing someone got me for Valentine's was dinner, chocolates and some roses. Well, I'm hoping something wonderful will happen this year, but my partner's in Florida and won't be back until after. So we won't get to celebrate. Probably we'll go out for dinner. Just it's a time to get together with your loved one. That's it. Um, it's a great way to pass some time. That's all. <laughs> well, this is my first Valentine's Day with my boyfriend, so I'm excited. And my birthday is right before Valentine's Day, so it's just a double whammy. Looking for a romantic city to take your significant other on Valentine's Day? Well, Burlington may be the spot for you, as Amazon.ca rated it 20 as the most romantic city in Canada. Victoria, BC was the most romantic city, while Waterloo, Ontario came in third place. Victoria's picturesque city regained the top spot after falling to number five last year. That's all your news for Thursday, February 7th. I'm Kyler Sanderson. And I'm Nicole Scholler. For more news coverage, check out IgniteNews.ca. Thanks for watching Mohawk.